Hey, this is Mr. Bergman. Hey, podcast 2.1.4, Rock Units. A unit of rock? What is a unit of rock? What is a rock a unit? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Rock units. Hmm. It really is a big thing of rock, okay? <laughs> and so that's our kind of goals, understand rock units are, identify the general shapes of rock units, and read and interpret geologic maps. This is going to be the big, tough one. But, hey, we're going to get there, and I think you're going to learn how to do it. So here are a couple of uh, – couple. I guess it's four – for different words that we're going to do, um, you want to understand these words. So, hey, what's a rock unit? Now, a rock unit is a large grouping of rocks defined by the distinctive and dominant, easily mapped and recognizable features. Basically, um, it's a big section of rock that is all kind of one type. And they look, we will be seeing them, talking here, seeing them on maps. So let's say we have a map of Colorado, and a rock unit might take up a huge pay, space of um, Colorado, and that's called a rock unit, okay? And it would be, all be made up of the same type of rock, say a particular variety of igneous rock or a particular variety of, of metamorphic rock or uh, sedimentary rock or whatever. So they can have rock units that are sedimentary or igneous or metamorphic. Now, here is a geologic map of the world to kind of give you a picture of the largest of the rock units, okay? And so if we look at this particular uh, geologic map, we see some different colors. One thing about geologic maps is they're very colorful, lots of colors. And the first one I want to talk about is called the shield. Now, the shield is colored kind of orangish here. And you can see the shield uh, here in the upper part of the North America, uh, up above the Great Lakes and basically lots of Canada, Greenland, etc. They are large areas of igneous and high-grade metamorphic rocks. So you find in these regions mainly igneous rocks and metamorphic. They are stable. They're very old, between 570 million and 2 to 3.5 billion years old. They're normally the nucleus of the continents. So these were kind of – the nucleus means it was sort of the birthplace of the continents as it was first forming when the continents first formed on the Earth. All right, so we're going to kind of walk through each of these. We'll talk about the platform, the Oregon, etc. So let's look at the platform. Notice that's different. Now I want to talk about now the sort of the purple ones, and I've got the definition down here. The purple ones you can see we can see in Africa a little bit of purple here in South America, and the purple now is uh, around the uh, Hudson Bay, and now we're up up in the upper Midwest. It's a continental area covered by relatively flat, gentle tilted sedimentary strata. That means these are sedimentary rocks, and um, which overlie a basement of consolidated igneous. So they're on top of igneous or metamorphic rocks. R realistically, they're probably on top of the shield um, uh, formation, and so therefore, yeah, that's that's what that is. Let's talk about the origin. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it origins. And the origin is this sort of a bluish color. Now, the bluish color, if you notice where the bluish color is, it's kind of an interesting one. If you look at the bluish colors, they tend to be on the edges of continents, okay? They are at the edges of tectonic plates. These were all the earthquakes take place and volcanoes and all that kind of stuff. So they um, have severe structural deformation of the Earth's crust due to the collision of the tectonic plates. They, these are called the orogenic belts. And, of course, as you know, this is like through here, this whole section right here. And then if we were to take it over here, that's like the ring of fire. So you see that here. And right here, as you recall from our previous chapter, um, India collided with um, Eurasia, and then that's what's causing all the issues here. I'm not sure exactly what caused here, but same kind of idea. And then the basin ones. Now, the basin is a structural formation of by warping, so that are caused by warping. And the basin one is this sort of uh, darky blue type thing right here, I would call it. And you can see it also in Saudi Arabia. So these are the underlying rocks, the rocks that are at the base of these portions of the continents. And then the large igneous provinces, okay, these are just not too many of these where you just these huge igneous, of course they're called igneous, that means there's igneous rock. Not too many, you get Iceland, um, uh, parts of Greenland down here in South America. So you just some very few places where you have these sort of big igneous intrusions. This is, of course is the Rift Valley of Africa right here, and you can get the idea, and you can copy down the definitions here. And then did I just do that? Okay, that's it. Okay, now a couple more words. Sills. What is a sill? Now, you've got a window sill at your house, right? Well, a sill is like a window sill, but it has to do with rocks. And so what you have is you have a igneous rock intrusion. Now, that means the igneous rocks kind of came through another set of rocks, and then they flattened out, and that's the sill. And here is the specific definition. It's a flat rock that has intruded between older layers of sedimentary rock. So this brown is sedimentary, and so is this uh, orange. Um, and then they move along a direction uh, of the foliation. That means they, they, 
they form in a flat spot. So they, they come up and they form flat. That's what a sill is. And here's a picture of an actual sill. This is in England. This, I think, actually is near like where uh, traditionally King Arthur uh, was thought to uh, reign. And then, see, what's happened is this uh, came up. It's gotten tilted, but some, somewhere down deep it came up, and then it was laid down flat. And then at some other point it got uplifted, and that's why we have the angle to it. But it's a flat place, and this is all igneous rock. So it's not sedimentary or metamorphic. It's igneous. And the last one's called a dike, and a dike is an intrusive dike. Uh, an intrusive dike is an igneous body that is an intrusion into an opening cross-cutting fissure. Basically, the idea is that you have an igneous rock. Maybe I should draw a picture here. And we, you know, we've got the layers laid down. Let's say this is some kind of a rock, and then all of a sudden, later on, some magma flows from the bottom and flows through here. And boom, this stuff, of course, is younger because it came in after the fact. And this is near Gunnison or Black Canyon near Gunnison, Colorado, right here. And we can see the dikes right here, of course. And we've also got a dike here. So this happens. Sometimes it comes from the bottom, as I pictured here, but sometimes others. All right, and the batholith, the last word. Uh, we've talked about this. Of course, Pikes Peak is a batholith. It's a large emplacement of igneous intrusive rock that forms from cooled magma deep in the Earth's crust. And then it, it gets pushed up. This is a half dome in Yosemite, and uh, it's all eroded away. Uh, this is like rock climber paradise. All right. Now, the other big thing I want to talk about in this podcast is how do you read a geologic map? And this is kind of a little blurry, I know, but this is the geologic map of Colorado. Notice it's just got a lot of different colors to it. My gosh, look at all those colors. Well, every igneous or every uh, geologic map has um, – oh, I forgot to say one thing. One thing we should talk about in a geolog ge geologic map is that when you're reading it, it's important to understand how to read it. Duh. Okay, <laughs> what you've got is it's important to understand that the Earth has, is kind of old. The scientists believe it's 4.5 billion years old. This is negative 4,500. That's in uh, thousands of years or millions of years, so that would be billion years. And each of these, there's what we call um, eons, eras, and periods. And typically we look at the periods, and certain periods are older than others. So this is the present, the P, and then we have this, or in the Miocene and the Ogolocene and the Eocene, etc. You might have heard of these. Everyone knows about the sort of the Mesozoic era, which has the Triassic and the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. These are different times that people talk about when they talk about the old age of the Earth, uh, Permian, Carboniferous, etc. But these things right here are important because one of the things that when you look at a geologic map is they're going to name the rock uh, by its age. And they'll put like a J, and the J stands for Jurassic. Or they'll put a capital C, which stands for Cretaceous. All right, so let's take a look. So, for example, take a look here. This is uh, we're going to look at the key for a particular uh, map. This is the map of Colorado that we'll zoom in on in a little bit. But I want you to notice right here is that we've got this Q right here, Q A, Q G. Now, the Q, just the Q itself, if we go back, the Q has to do with the Quaternary period. Now, where the heck is the Quaternary period here? Quaternary is one of the uh, the periods in the uh, world, and now I can't even find it here, but it's in here somewhere, I promise. Okay. So, and then um, we got the Holocene and the Pliocene. These are the periods of time in the geologic time scale. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so Carboniferous and Cambrian, etc. You can see these down here, Paleozoic. Mesozoic, so you can kind of see, see Pleistocene and all these different things. Let's take a look at another picture here. Here's the Ogliocene. So if you go to the Ogliocene, we saw that right here, see, didn't we? Right, and so these are the different rocks. And notice that they're also colored, and there's the tertiary period, um, and that these stands. So as you see the T, and the T stands for tertiary. And then the other letters, the um, let's say the W C, uh, is Cathedral Bluffs Tongue. These are now the names of those rocks um, that we're going to see in a map in a minute. And then we've got this. This there's lots of things in the. This is the key of the map, and we have one of these in class, and we'll be looking at it. See, there's lots of things here as you kind of walk through these.